Hello, welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler, and today we're going to talk about word problems. I want to go through a couple of examples and kind of walk you through your thought process as you tackle each one of these. The first one says, John takes four tests in a semester and he will earn an automatic A in his class if his average is at least a 90. So far, he scored an 87, an 86, and a 91 on his first three tests. And then it asks you, what does he need to earn on his fourth test to get an automatic A in his class? So this particular problem asks you about averages. And when you find the average of a set of numbers, what you do is you add them up and divide by however many there are. So what we would need to do is if we want to get at least a 90 on the four tests, we would have to add 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 to get our total. The other way you can do that is 4 times 90. And that'll get you 360. So this is the total we need. If we subtract off the three tests we already have, we'll get the remaining number that our fourth test has to be. So minus 87, 86, and 91. If you subtract these off, you're left with 96. What that means is John has to get at least a 96 on his fourth test to get an average of 90 across the four. So let's try another example. This one says, Devin bought a shirt for work that was on sale for $20.50. If the original price of the shirt was $52.50, how much of a discount did he receive? So they give you an option of percentages because there's a couple of ways you can look at the discount. Um, but in this case, I want the percent. So we're looking for what's called percent of change. And there's a quick little uh, acronym you can use for percent of change. It's called no over O, at least that's what I call it. No over O, it means the new number minus the original number divided by the original number. So I'm gonna plug those values in. The new number is the discounted price of the shirt, in this case, 2050. minus the original number is how much it was um, to start off with, 52.50. And then divide that by the original number again. So when we subtract this, we'll get a fraction negative 32 over 52.50. The reason this is negative is because we're going down in price. If we were going up in price, it'd be a positive number. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out what the value of this fraction is as a decimal so we can turn it into a percent. To do that, I'm gonna use a calculator. So let's see. We have a calculator, I can just type this fraction in as it is. I'm gonna do 32 divided by 52.5 equals, it says 0 0.6095. So 0 0.6095. To turn this into a percent, we need to multiply it by 100 or move the decimal point to the right two spots. So if I do that, one, two, it becomes 60.95 or 61%. So we got a 61% discount on a shirt. Let's try another example. This one says, Heather is planning a conference for her team. She has a budget of $1,100 to reserve a conference room and provide dinner for her 25 team members. If the cost of reserving the room is $240, write an inequality to represent how to calculate the amount X Heather can spend on dinner for each team member. So there's a lot going on in this one. So what I would suggest is breaking it down piece by piece based on the information you're given. We know that we need to write an inequality as our answer. We're not actually looking for a number. We just need an inequality to represent how to find the number. We know we have $1,100 is our max budget. So what that tells me is Everything that we talk about has to be less than 
or equal to $1,100. It can't be any more than that. We also know that the cost of reserving the room is $240, so I can include that. Plus, we're trying to provide dinner for 25 people. The amount of money we can spend is going to be X. Calculate the amount X. So that means I have 25 people times however much money I spend on each of them. So times X. And by piecing all that together one step at a time, I've just created my inequality. 25X plus $240 is less than or equal to $1,100. Therefore, I've taken the information, and now I have an inequality that can represent how to calculate or solve for x if I needed to. So sometimes the word problem won't actually ask you to find an actual value. It'll ask you to find something that'll represent how to find that value. When you tackle word problems, more than likely, all of them are going to be different. The idea is to read it carefully and piece out the information that they give you and use it one step at a time to put together the answer that you need. So I hope this helps as you go through and solve word problems. Good luck, and I'll see you next time. Your education will add up when you visit us at GEDS.com. For future tips and videos, be sure to subscribe and follow.